Welcome to our live training session number 17, part two. In this video, we're going to continue on creating our base session file and creating custom page layout so we can most effectively and efficiently tune this engine. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this live training session so we can get started. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Honda Civic using AM Infinity. Now, in the last video, we set up all of our inputs and outputs and all of our calibration details. We need to go in in this video, set up our tables so they can be relevant for this particular setup here for a turbo application, as well as going in and creating some custom layouts that we're going to find here. Uh, we're going to get rid of some pages and add some. So we're going to find that we have very specific things we want to look at. And the only way we can do that most efficiently is if we set up a page for that task or function. So let's go here and take a look at our first page. We see we're under dash. Now nothing in this dash page here is going to be useful for me for doing my tuning. I want to get rid of this. I'm going to go up into my layout. I'm going to go here to delete page and simply delete my dash page. Click yes. So now it's going to be opening up our start tab. It's going to be our, basically our first tab we're going to have here. This is very useful. We don't want to go ahead and delete anything in here. So we're going to take a look. We see we have our lambda cranking table, fuel trim coolant, Lambda after start, crank the E, and ignition map crank table. So all of these are going to be needed. Now, in addition to this, we need to add one more table that's going to be super important. That's going to be our flex cranking adder table. Now, if you're not flex fuel based, you don't have to worry about this. But because this is flex fuel, we want to go ahead and add this table. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go in here to a 2D table. I'm going to type in here flex, and we're going to find that we have our flex adder table. I'll click this first one, click OK. And now we'll find this table appears. This table is going to allow me to add additional injector pulse width at my different flex fuel mounts that I'm working with. This is going to be allowing me uh, to go in and, and make sure on a cold engine when I have a lot of ethanol content. We'll see it's going to be from 0 to 1.0. 1.0 is 100%. As we get up in higher and higher content amounts, as the temperature drops below 60 degrees, as it gets colder and colder, we're going to need more and more injector pulse width added to our fuel delivery on cranking because we're not going to be able to atomize the fuel and get it into the engine. This is true for any alcohol engine. We'll find that this is only going to be related to our flex content. So if you're running methanol um, or, or you're running ethanol and you don't have flex fuel, you could go into your lambda cranking table here and take care of it right into the table. Now, one thing I'm going to do real quick before we make any other changes, we'll go to your wizards and then we'll go here to our unit preference. Right now I'm set on my SI units. We'll go back to US units click close. These are going to be a little bit familiar with most people are going to be watching this. We're going to find it's going to be displaying gasoline air fuel and we're going to find it's going to be based on things such as our coolant temp and Fahrenheit. So there's going to be more units that uh, everybody's going to be accustomed to if you're within the U.S. or um, you're within a, 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 a country that's going to be referencing U.S. based units. So what we're going to find here um, in addition to this, we've added our flex cranking table. We want to give this table a little bit of color. Right now it's just going to be simply black and white. Let's right click here We'll go into our color options, and this is going to be change colors. We'll go here to gradient 4. You can see it's going to be the nice coloring here. We'll go here from a value of 0 to, let's go something like 5, and let's go here to something like 15, and let's go here to something like 35, and let's click apply to the table, and we can see now it's applied. So as we change our values, it's going to be changing the coloring. Um, it just makes it look a little bit aesthetically pleasing. Now in our plot data here, let's see if we have what we have in our uh, our channels here. We're going to find that